This O-Drive Micro Motor Driver has an integrated encoder. It's an all-in-one compact solution for your next robotics project that's super easy to integrate. Let's dive in. If you're new to my channel, I have a website at kevinwoodrobotics.com where I have a bunch of resources on robotics and computer vision. So check it out and subscribe to learn more. Let's start off by going over some features of the O-Drive. On the mechanical side, what we have is a 32 by 32 by 7.5 millimeter. This is really small, it's a little bit bigger than a coin, so it's super easy to integrate with your motors. It has an encoder magnet that's included when you purchase it. It has a screw terminal that you can solder on board, which is also included. What's not included is the JST-GH connector cable, so you're going to have to get those on your own or purchase it from their website. They have a CAN daisy chain cable too that you need to do when you want to connect two of the drivers together, and again, that's not included. So on the electrical side, what we have is it has a 10 to 30 voltage capacity. It goes up to 32 volts max. It has a 3.5 amp continuous and 7 amp peak. We also have 80 watts continuous and 100 watt peak. It uses CAN 2.0B with 1 megabytes per second. And it also has CAN FD that's coming soon. It controls servos like BLDCs, PMACs, or ACIMs. It has an integrated encoder that we talked about in the very beginning with the number MA702 and has off-board encoder options like quadrature, hall, and spy. On the control side, what we have is sensorless speed control. There's a position, velocity, and current control. It supports up to 24 kilohertz PWM frequency, 48 kilohertz motor ripple current frequency, 8 kilohertz control frequency, and it's gonna go up to 24 kilohertz coming soon. We have 700 hertz max electrical frequency and 2000 hertz coming soon. On the software side, what we have is Python O-Drive package. There's a O-Drive web GUI. There's Arduino support, as well as a ROS2 package for CAN communication. Now, if you're completely new to ROS2, I have a playlist on my channel that takes you from the basics all the way to advanced simulation concepts using ROS2 control and gazebo. So go ahead and check it out. So here's a diagram explaining how to mount the magnet for your O-Drive Micro. So you want to make sure that the board and the magnet is one millimeter apart. You could use a spacer or measure the dimensions so that it's exactly one millimeter. Here we have the shaft coupling. So this is what's going to connect the magnet and the motor shaft. So on their website, they recommend that you could use glue, but personally, I would use a set screw to hold on to the magnet and the shaft coupling. That way, if you ever decide to take it off your assembly, you can take it off and reuse it. So here's how it will look when it's fully assembled. You could use standoffs like you see in this picture here so that the distance between the magnet and the board is exactly one millimeter. Here's the dimensions of the board. The holes is gonna be 26 millimeters by 26 millimeters apart. It's a perfect square and you're gonna use four by M3 screws to hold on to it. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the electrical connections and pinouts for the O-Drive micro board. So here you can see on the outer ends, we have the DC plus and minus, and in the middle, we have the ABC phase for your motor. One thing to note is that the motor phase connections can be connected in any order, so it's okay if you mess up the order. Here you can see this is the feedback input output, here up on top is the J1, which is what we're looking at. There's going to be 12 pins here. You can see that we have the thermistor here, the 5 volt, the encoder feedbacks, the ground, another 5 volt. These are the hall ABCs and another ground. There's a legend that I put up here, so you could go ahead and reference that for the different types of pins. Now here we have the CAN input output. This is for the J2 and J3, as you can see on the side. So here for the J2, we have the CAN power high, low, and the CAN ground. And on the J3, we also have the CAN power high, low, and ground. So this is gonna be used for the inputs and outputs of your CAN bus. So here's the SSI IO, the J4. J4 is on the left of the board here. So here you can see we have five pins, the five volt, the SPI MISO, the SPI NCS, and the SPI SCK. And here we have the ground. 
Now, if you're looking to get your own connectors, here's a list of the different parts that you need as well as the part numbers. So here we have the screw terminal on the left. And what they use is the JSTGH 1.25 millimeter pitch connectors. They're gonna use specifically the four pin, the five pin, and the 12 pin. So here you can see if you want to get a kit, this is a good option for you. What's nice about this is that there's pre-crimped cables. Uh, one thing though to note is that they only go up to the 10 pin configuration. So if you're looking to get a 12 pin configuration, you're gonna have to buy that one separately or you could get it from the O-Drive website. Another option is to buy this kit. So this kit comes with the connectors and the crimp terminals. So this is good if you want to assemble your own cable and just make sure you have the right crimp as well. So here's a table showing the list of compatible and incompatible encoders for the micro. So the check means that it's supported. X means that it's not supported, and E means experimental, and S means coming soon. So here you can see that the ones that the micro support are the onboard magnetic internal incremental. We also have the Hall effect sensor. We have the GUI AMT. This is the one that's on the website, and the AMS and the MA732 and MA702. So depending on the specific type of encoder you plan to use, make sure you connect the MOC to VCC for these type of encoders. And for the MA ones, you want to connect the MOC to ground. What's nice about these servo motor controllers is that you can control it at different parts of the control loop. So here on the left, you could give it a position command. You could also give it a velocity command, or you could give it a current command to control the torque directly. So here is the trajectory control. This is one of the control modes that you could use. This will allow you to go from one point to the other in a very smooth fashion. So to do this, you can see that the commands in Python is very simple. You set the input mode to input mode trap trajectory. And then right here is how you would set the positions for the actual motion. Next, we have the circular position control. So this is good if you have continuous movement, like for example, a wheel or a conveyor belt. So you would set the circular set points here to be true. And then down here at the bottom, you have the circular set point range and you can set some number for that. The velocity control is also pretty simple to set up. We have the control mode is gonna be set to control mode dot velocity control. And to set the input velocity, you just set it as input velocity equals to one. For torque control, go ahead and set the control mode to be control mode dot torque control. Make sure to set the torque constant here. Here we have then the example 8.23 divided by 150. This 150 is your KV, which you have to figure out for yourself. And then we have the input torque, which is your desired torque value. Here the torque is in Newton meters. So for each motor that you use, you need to make sure you set the motor configuration. So these are just some parameters that you have to set. This is an example code for Python for this specific model. So a couple things to note is that for the pull pairs and torque constant, these are probably the two main parameters that you need to know about your motor. Sometimes these parameters might be unknown, so there's a couple ways you can do to figure that out. To figure out the pull pairs, what you want to do is go ahead and count the number of magnets that you have and divide it by two. In this case, we have eight, so divide by two, we get four. What you want to do is make sure that you don't use the number of coils because that would give you the wrong answer. So magnets are these tiny gray things here on the side. Now to figure out your KV for the torque constant KT, what you want to do is go ahead and first spin your motor at constant speed and then measure the RMS voltage for one of the phases. So what that means is you would just take two of the cables here out of the three. And the KV, the formula for that is RPM divided by your voltage. And for the KT, which is your torque constant, is going to be 8.27 divided by KV. So you might be wondering, where did the 8.27 comes from? So the idea is you have the power of the mechanical equals power of the electrical. You're gonna have a torque times your angular velocity equals IV. If you substitute torque to be KT times your current, and your angular velocity is kV times 2 pi divided by 60 times your voltage. The reason why we do the 2 pi divided by 60 is because we have the radians per second version of kV and the RPM version. So here we have it in radians per second. 
and all of that equals IV. And here you can see that if we cancel the I and the V out, we are left with this. You do some rearrangement and finally you're left with KT equals 8.27 divided by KV. And to set up your encoder, make sure you choose the right encoder option that you're going with. Here we're looking at the onboard encoder. And to do this, you have a few simple commands you have to run here. You have the load encoder, commutation encoder, and you want to save the configuration. And then you have some requested state to be encoder offset calibration. So all of this will do the calibration process once you assemble the magnet and you should be ready to drive your motor. So the way you communicate with these motors is through a CAN communication. So the way CAN works is they have a CAN high and CAN low. These cables are twisted pair cables that can connect to two CAN devices. One thing to note is that it could go up to one megabyte per second for classical CAN and five megabytes per second for CAN FD. So a couple features of CAN is that each device has a CAN ID and you could go up to 63 O drives on one CAN bus. And probably one of the biggest benefits of CAN is that it's resistance to electrical interference. So the reason it's able to do this is because the CAN high and CAN low is relative to each other, not the ground, like the USB communication. So here you can see this is a schematic showing how you can connect your O drives to the system. So here you see that it's O drive Pro and S1, but it could be the O drive Micro. Up on top, we have the power supply or battery. We have a power distribution block and we have a controller. So one thing to make sure of is this part here. You want to make sure that this is a point where all the grounds connect. So we have the battery, we have the DC minus, we have the logic ground and the CAN ground. So this up here is probably the key part, but depending on your setup, it may look a little bit different, but just take the key point away for your implementation. So here you can see this is an example of how you would daisy chain the O drives together. It uses these cables here and you can see that to verify the communication, you could do some tests here. So here this is in Linux, you could do the can dump command. So this is assuming that you have your uh, can devices already set up. Another option is to test it out using the Python package can. This is a simple script you could use to verify your communication. Here we also have the ROS2 package for O drive. This is super nice because it supports CAN communication. Now, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, then you may need to get this CAN hat for your Pi. If you're using the Jetson Nano, you could get something like this, which is a CAN expansion board for the Nano. And you could also use something like this, which is a USB to CAN bus converter. This could connect directly to your Linux PC, for example. So all the links of the products I mentioned will be in the description below. So go ahead and check it out. If you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.